Be from Byron on, you guys all know Byron. Um, this is, and again, this is a plug for the Senior Four Point program. Um, Byron's Senior Four Point is three years in the making. Okay, three years in the making. You don't have to wait until your senior year to start this, right? These are wonderful things to do and wonderful things to have on your college application. These are, these are things that will set you apart with your college application. So starting these early and getting them done early is a wonderful thing to do before you get to be a senior, okay? And Byron, please take it away. presenting my senior four point and uh, my senior four point is essentially about fighting against education inequality education inequality may sound like a distant topic for many of you because to some extent we are all privileged to be able to study at a high quality private school but this is not the case for all students numerous students from around the world have been suffering from inadequate access to education so today, I'm going to talk about how I have been addressing the education issue in my home city, Guangzhou. First of all, I would like to provide you some basic background information um, on the education issue in Guangzhou. There is a group of people called the floating population in Guangzhou, who are families that move from their rural hometown to the city for better job opportunities. However, the children are unable to enroll in public high school in Guangzhou because the city's stringent schooling policy stipulates that parents either need to own a house in Guangzhou or work for more than five years in the city in order to make their children eligible for enrollment at public high school. Therefore, the floating family have to either go back to their rural hometown to have their kids go to school or stay in the city, but at the same time, their kids cannot attend high school. This forces many families to make a difficult choice between leaving their children behind for poor quality of education and foregoing the state benefits that come with their urban jobs. When it comes to children from floating families, the issue becomes more alarming. First and foremost, the children suffer from poor quality of education since they have no access to public high school, and private high school is not a viable option because they simply cannot afford the tuition. At the same time, children also suffer from loss of identity. They are thousands of miles away from their rural hometown, and a huge wealth and culture gap make it difficult for them to blend in with the local students in the city. The low quality of life is also a problem, since most of the floating families have very low incomes. Last but not least, children from floating families also suffer from loss of parental companions because their parents have to work for long hours every day and cannot take care of their kids, which results in a weak sense of family belonging. All of the issues I just mentioned above arose two central questions for me. How can I address the education inequality issue in Guangzhou? And how can I help children from floating family re-establish re their self-identity and family attachment? Addressing education inequality is a very big task, and I did recognize that it would be really hard for me as an individual to solve the whole problem. So I chose to collaborate with Clover Youth, a nonprofit organization in Guangzhou, uh, of which one of my friends is the founder. This MPO has been working to support students from low-income family, but they have never worked with children from floating family before. After joining this organization, I initiated a whole new session which focuses on supporting floating families. The two major parts of the new section are summer camps and high school counseling services for students from floating families. These two programs are also the core of my senior project. The first part of my project is organizing a summer camp for students from floating families. I designed my summer camp as a residential program because the students from floating families um, are off from school during the summer, but their parents have to go to work every day and cannot look after them. So I want to provide a safe and comfortable environment for them to live and study. I also led some family-focused activities during the summer camp to help the kids counter their loss of family belonging. Besides, I organized some fun personal finance workshops to give my students some tips on how to budget their pocket money. I also started a program at my summer camp called the Career Broadcast Room to help my students explore the future career options. Here's some picture from my summer camp. The picture on the left are us doing some physical exercises before each day's activities. And the picture on the left 
uh, is some group discussion we have. I think group discussion is a very important part of my summer camp. I define this discussion topic to be related to my student family, their cultural background, as well as their hometown, because I want them to realize their tight connection to the family and recognize their own rural hometown, the place where they come from. In the end, most of my students can proudly talk about their hometown and embrace their unique identity instead of simply trying to act as their peers living in the city. And here are more pictures uh, from the summer camp. We did a lot of drawing. Um, and here are some pictures of the homework I assigned to my students. I asked them to write down three things that they did well every day. And I also asked them to observe what did their parents do during different periods of time, um, during the weekend when they got back home. In this way, they noticed many things that their parents are doing every day, but they have never noticed before. I hope to let my students realize how hard the parents have been working to support the family and thus encourage them to help their parents and take on their family responsibility. Here's some drawings that my students did on the last day of the summer camp. I assigned them to different groups and led them to draw pictures that represent um, their group. We can see that some, um, the group on the left used the character from Spongebob to represent themselves, and the group on the right chose a chicken as their mascot. And the second part of my project is high school counseling services. Working with some other volunteers, we offer lectures as well as one-on-one -on -one counseling on how to obtain eligibility for entering public high school in Guangzhou. And if a family decides to pursue education at a private institution, I help them with applying for financial aid in, at private high school because the requirement for applying financial aid is very strict in China and it is usually hard to do for family without experiences. And now I would like to share some incredible outcomes of the project. So first, I would like to share a group of numbers, 1,105. We helped more than 1,000 students go into the matching high school, and we recruited more than 100 volunteers for the summer camp program. And I have organized summer camp at five different schools and communities from Zhou. And we also collected over 3.3 million RMB, which is equivalent to 48,000 US dollars through our fundraising programs for our future rents. And our organization also gained a lot of exposure. Our stories were recorded by Guangzhou Daily, which is the largest press in the city. And at last, at last, I did make a difference. I started a petition on the education policy, and I collected over 10,000 signatures, and I submitted my petition to the government along with a proposal on schooling policy. And fortunately, my proposal was partially adopted by the government, and the restriction to be enrolled at public high school was loosened for non-resident students in the city. I have learned a lot through my senior four-point project. The first thing and probably the most important thing is to dream big and don't be afraid of trying. I have never thought that I could change the government policy on education, um, but I still decided to give it a shot, and it turned out that I succeeded and contributed to my own effort to building a more equitable education system in the city. The second thing is to do a project step by step, especially uh, for large and complex projects. You can always start from small things and then go to big tasks. And you can also start from theoretical stuff and then go to um, practical operation. So for example, I actually did some research before my project and I wrote a research paper which was later published in a journal in China. Uh, and then when I really got to interact with the kids from Floating Family, I learned more about them and they, in turn, help me enrich my previous research, and then they are no longer just number of figures on the paper, but instead they are real people, real community that I care about and hope to uh, help them. And the third thing is do not assume one thing to help someone by guiding instead of giving. So my initial goal is to simply help those students get into high school, but during the summer camp, I found that many students actually don't really want to go to high school. Some of them want to find a job um, during high school, and some of them want to pursue an athletic career. So simply helping them to get to school doesn't really work. So what I did was to connect them to the resources me and my organization have to help them pursue their own passion. And last but not least, collaboration is very important throughout my project. As I mentioned before, it is very difficult for me as an individual to address the education problem in Guangzhou. So I collaborated with local nonprofit and also recruited some volunteers. 
It is important to use the connection you have in your community to obtain the maximum possible resource for your project. The actual outcome of that project has been far better than my initial expectation. We all know that China is an authoritarian regime, and it's very surprising that I actually made the government change its policy through a democratic method like the petition I did. Um, and also, my senior four point turned out to be a series of activities and a long term commitment instead of one single project. So, my initial project is just to do a summer camp for the kids. But after learning more about them, I decided to go one step further. So I organized all the counseling services and the petition, the proposal thing, and at last I did make a difference. Uh, so until today, I've been doing my project for nearly three years, and I'm going to continue doing it in the future. And so on the wise for juniors, the first thing is definitely start early. Your project can take very long. And then the second thing is to think about how you can make your community better using your project instead of just taking it as an assignment. And the last thing is to, uh, don't stop your project even if you finish presenting it. You can still use your project to benefit, benefit your community and then you can possibly leave a, a legacy in your community that has a long lasting impact. So now it comes to the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Okay, well then have a great day. Woo.